If you're new to my channel, a special hello. I focus on bookish foodie content, specifically in the nonfiction space. This is anything from a food memoir to food history, world travel, and much more. I do dabble in fiction from time to time, but primarily you can call me a nonfiction booktuber. Today, I am excited to talk about my first ever advanced reader copy or ARC. I actually received a book from a publisher. So this book is Why Waste Food by Andrew F. Smith. I got this from Rectian Books. Rectian Books is based in the UK. If you don't know them, they are responsible for publishing one of my favorite series, the Edible Book series. I reached out to their marketing team a while ago and a lot of book copy, book copies versus Kindle copies were on hold due to COVID. And this showed up. I'm so excited. It also came with a little bit of information. So I think I, I've never had to do one of these before. So I want to at least read you um, what it says. So from the marketing department, new in the food controversy series, Why Waste Food by Andrew Smith a no-nonsense practical guide for solving one of the most pressing agricultural, environmental, and social problems of our time. Smith outlines the enormity of the problem on farms, in homes, in retail and food service, and warns there is no silver, silver bullet to making sure food is valued, preserved, and appreciated. All of us, policymakers, businesses, producers, and eaters, need to be part of the solution. And this is a quote from Danny... Nuremberg, the president of Food Tank, which is also where I am a intern. So the book comes in at 176 pages, some of which include the references. So I think the antho the epilogue started at page 163. It just had its U.S. publication release on September 29th, 2020. So this is very hot off the presses, and I'm really, really honored that this was sent to me. So Andrew F. Smith teaches at the New School in New York City. He is the author and editor of 32 books, holy crap, including Fast Food, The Good, The Bad, and The Hungry, also published by Rakuten Books. So Rakuten Books, again, based in the U.S., based in the U.K., and this was also printed in partnership with the University of Chicago Press. So first off, thank you, Rakuten Books and the, and the University of Chicago Press for sending this to me. So they just sent a little one-pager and a book. I had no idea I was going to receive it. Ooh, sorry, the sunlight. I'll try to, I'll try to avoid that as I go through, um, but I am super, super touched that I got this. And it came just before my birthday, and I participated in a couple, in a reading sprint with... Catherine Z from her channel and Bookish Potatoes. So it really helped me get through this book pretty quickly. So this book is broken up into seven chapters along with a prologue and an epilogue. And what Andrew Smith is attempting to do is in each chapter, break down a different part of the global food supply chain and explain where waste is coming from. I found this book super compact very easy to understand and very approachable. If you were taking a food science class or even a food policy class or even social anthropology classes, like this is a great textbook read instead of reading a textbook. It's also for a size reference, fairly tiny, just so you guys can kind of like see the difference. It's a pocket sized book and I think that's great. If this was my assigned reading at university, I would be a much happier camper because you each chapter is 20 pages, but again, the book is so small and it's very, very informative. So that was high level. I wanna go into some of the quick facts per each chapter that I learned. So this is not going to follow a memoir or anything in that kind of narrative world. This is very fact-based, but very easy to digest. About one third of all food grown for human consumption is lost or discarded every year, despite financial, environmental, and ethical reasons to not waste food. This is all the book's gonna talk about, essentially. It does offer some solutions. The solutions are what are already exist in the world or what the emerging solutions are. This book is not a how to fix the world. It, this is a book that says, here are the problems globally, but here are some of the solutions I am starting to see. For example, the first chapter is all about the war on food waste. And this is how governments and policy, governments are getting involved in implementing policies to help change the world. Whether that's your recycling program that now requires you to have trash, compost, recycling, 
or things about food waste being diverted into nonprofits or something like Feeding America, where food waste, if it can be repurposed, should be repurposed. The second chapter is farm waste, and it explains how farmers are in this very difficult predicament where they need to, there's a couple of problems. A lot, what's happening with global food is that there are very few mega farms now that are responsible for the whole supply chain. So a lot of the Midwest is responsible for corn and soy. They need to overproduce so that they have a margin in case some of the crop is not usable or it fails. That overproduction then has to get sold into retail locations. Any, any part that is not deemed not worthy by standards to be sold or anything like that that can't make it to the field before spoilage, can't be harvested before spoilage, that is a type of food waste. And you can't just, gr some say, well, okay, well, it's bio, it's, I can compost this. I can just run my tractor through it. Yes, but this, this is food that could be helping people who are hungry. So this is what that chapter focuses on. I'm keeping my summaries pretty high level because I want you to read and enjoy the book. But that is the chapter two of Farm Waste. The third chapter is Manufactured Waste. Okay, a farmer now has corn or tomatoes and now a retailer wants that corn or tomatoes. Have you ever noticed that your all your tomatoes look the same? They are all round, they are all red, they are all perfect, they are all delicious. Those beautification standards create a lot of waste. A bruised banana that will not look pretty on shelf, it's tossed away. A lot of times it is just sent straight to landfill. That food could be given to a food pantry, it could be diverted, composted, etc it sits in a landfill and that supply chain of supp from the farmer to the shelf is what the manufactured waste is really focusing on. There are some businesses that will divert the imperfect food to s value, value bringing goods. That's not the right term, but value added goods. There we go. So if you have a bruised tomato, cool. Send the tomato off to be made into salsa, made into tomato sauce. The same thing with jams and preserves. So there are solutions embedded into this book, but it won't completely solve the problem. But that is another example of manufactured waste. Chapter four is supermarket waste. If Have you ever worked in a supermarket? Have you ever worked anywhere where you're selling a fresh good? Have you heard of first in, first out, best buy dates? All of this is what's covered in the supermarket chapter. I think one of the biggest things that they talk about is that people follow the mantra, when in doubt, throw it out. And I am guilty of this as well. If my milk says best buy a certain date and Dan hasn't finished it, I won't drink it because I don't feel comfortable drinking it. Dan, he'll drink after a week, a week after because he'll, his mantra is best buy is best quality. And then from there, it's not that great. Milk spoilage freaks me out, but I have eaten things past expiration dates like pasta, cans of soup, Oh, I have a visitor. Hold on one sec. Yeah, do you want to do you want to talk about food waste and why waste food, Bubby? Okay, we'll see how long Hamilton sits here. I doubt he's going to make it much longer, but it's nice to have him. So that is supermarket waste. If uh, you know, it, there has to be proper training for you to know what is first in, what is first out, how to rotate, how to know where the food came from each farm, each supplier, and knows how long that it's going to stay good on the shelf. Of course, now my battery light came on. Yeah, it's just a filming disaster today. It's okay. There's a chapter all about restaurant waste. Restaurant waste is the scraps and the leftovers. They talk a lot about the farm to tail movement, uh, snout to tail, and buying locally versus it's, it's a challenge. You have to buy enough that you ha you can make your Saturday rush, you can fulfill orders. But if you have too much, what do you do with that leftover fish, that left those leftover scraps? That is another chapter of this book. Another is consumer waste. And that is something where I think we can all take actions. For example, consumers throw out about a third of all of the food that they buy every year. Some of it not even opened out of the package. I admit I have accidentally let things get mushy. You ever leave a cucumber out too long? It gets mushy. Like it falls apart and it's gross. But I would love to learn more about how to compost. I know how to compost, but I live in a high rise apartment complex. So now I'm trying to find where in Chicago 
how can I compost in my high rise? So I am going to talk to my building management to see, because some, some of it is as simple as you can buy a compost lid and bin and you leave it in the lobby and then someone will come and pick it up and you pay $30 a month for that pickup service. But will the front lobby let me keep a compost bin down there the one day a month for pickup? I don't know, but I think consumer, the consumer waste chapter really brings to light what we can do to make small changes, whether it's pre-portioning, whether it's not always impulse buying on a BOGO. I found it super informative. Another was chef waste, and this was talking about what chefs... I give the book a lot of credit for saying that, you know, chefs, you are now influencers. You need to start you know, uh, speaking out about the changes that need to be made in the world. I am so surprised that you are sitting here. You are being such a good boy. Yeah, you are. Are you just hungry? He's probably waiting for me to feed him. Um, sorry, guys. Easily distracted by a cat. So, food-related waste is the final chapter in the book before the epilogue. Food-related waste is things like packaging, the containers. In Chicago, we banned the use of the individual straw. I pay 10 cents, I think it's five to, cents, five to 10 cents for every plastic bag. Okay, well, I was right and my camera died shortly after. I, <laughs> where did I leave off? So sorry, I'm sure the camera angle's different too. The final chapter is food-related waste. Food-related waste is things like the role of packaging especially single-use items such as straws, your utensils from your takeout chain, and etc. I think one of what I did enjoy was learning what major retailers and restaurants and fast food chains have made changes. I didn't know this, but the Kentucky Fried Chicken like gallon bucket is now recyclable and reusable. More importantly, it's actually top shelf dishwasher safe. And KFC received a reward because that reduced about 70% of their packaging related waste in their restaurants globally. That is a big change that helps the environment. But it also brings to light other things like single use cups from Starbucks. Look, I am a Starbucks consumer just like everybody else or a, a coffee, single coffee beverage consumer. What people don't know is that a coffee cup, which we've moved away from styrofoam, which is a step in the right direction, but now the paper cups are double lined paper with a wax layer in between. The wax layer is what keeps that heat in, keeps you from burning your hands and etc. What people don't realize is that cup is actually not recyclable. It is recyclable, but you need a special facility to do that. So you can't put that paper cup in the same recycling bin as your newspapers, your envelopes, and your paper. It would actually need to be hand sorted and sent separately. I would challenge that it's up to the restaurant or the food service chain to provide that service if they are going to use that type of container. There are talks and a lot of great technologies coming where you can make that wax layer from plant-based things, items, food items. I don't know even what to say, but it's like seaweed has become an alternative source for making different packaging, which is really exciting. I am on the way to getting rid of saran wrap and plastic wrap entirely in exchange for, I don't know if you guys have seen like beeswax wrappers have now become a thing. You have to hand wash them and they're good for about 300 uses. I haven't bought from a specific brand yet. I'm not here to endorse a specific brand, but to me, that seems like another step and a change I can make in my own life. I also try not to use single bags. Single bags did make a comeback though because of COVID and I genuinely understand that. <clears throat> Excuse me, all of the food stores I was going to didn't want you to bring your own reusable bags because you could be bringing in contact, other germs, etc. But I do think that now we will get back to that. I even finally bought my own reusable bags for produce or bulk items like beans. There are little things that we can do, and that's what I do enjoy about this book. Why waste food? We don't have to, and that is, I think, the point of Andrew Smith's book. We don't have to waste food. So much, there's enough food being produced and thrown out, we could solve world hunger two times over. But what we haven't done is set up systems where that food can be repurposed and put back into the communities to help them. <clears throat> Excuse me again, sorry, I'm like trying to hold back a cough. I won't try to stand on my high horse because I'm not an expert in this space, but it is a space I'm super passionate about, which is why I am so, so grateful that Rakuten sent this book to me. I hope I get more books. I would love to be like a foodie influencer. I'm not a chef, I'm not a food writer, but I love talking about this. And I love, 
making small changes. I can't wait for the day that I buy a house where I can compost in my own backyard. Hold on. So would I recommend this book? Yes, hands down. I think it is, are you okay buddy? I think it is very approachable. I think it is very informative. I think it also is very current. So there are documentaries that this book references that you can watch on Netflix right now. One of the things I loved was the reference to Chef Massimo Bottura. Massimo Bottura has the number one restaurant in the world. And when he was asked to come to a big event, instead of cooking at the event in a pop-up, he used all the food scraps from the event to feed the poor in the working areas of Italy. And it, the, the documentary that was made based on this event is called like, uh, The Theater of Life. I know it's on Netflix because it's in my queue and now I'm very excited to watch it tonight. I think that that kind of moment is amazing and it started off as a one-off event. Then he set up that kind of workshop at the Rio Olympics. He has continued to receive grants to continue to take the leftover food from these major events and basically create soup kitchens to help feed the local people who are working and need food and need meals. I think that is a great model that we all should implore in all different kinds, implement, not implore, implement in different areas. Hi. <laughs> I've never seen him this calm before. I think he's just so being dramatic because he's hungry. Another part that I liked in the consumer waste chapter was how can you repurpose some food that you have that you don't want to throw out. One of the things I have found in Chicago is a nonprofit organization called the Love Fridge. So the Love Fridge is a community fridge. There are multiple community fridges throughout the Chicago area targeting areas where there's a little bit more food scarcity where people might be in search of better food because sometimes what happens in models of foods, moments of food scarcity is you have money, but you don't have a lot of money and the fresh fruit, the fresh vegetables cost more than the bag of chips or the five nuggets for a dollar. So these community fridges allow regular people like me to take excess, excess items like pantry items or fresh fruit and vegetables and leave them in the fridges and people can take what they want and leave what they don't need. I did that and we got rid of, I think, five bags of pasta because I should preface, I'm on a meal plan that changes every month. I buy all local and organic ingredients, but sometimes I have leftover bags and cans of beans. We donated all of it and it felt so much better to donate that all than let it go bad in my pantry or sit in my freezer for oblivion. Do you have like bags of fruits and vegetables in your freezer that just are gonna be there till the end of time? Consider finding a community fridge or a food pantry where you can donate those items. So this concludes my review of Why Waste Food by Andrew F. Smith. Thank you again, Rakuten, for Rakuten Books for sending this to me. I'm so touched and honored. And what do you guys think? Do you Would you pick up this nice book? Hundreds, less than 175 pages. I think it's super approachable. Let me know in the comments below. If you are new to my channel or if you haven't, please hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. Even a comment about Hamilton is welcome because Hamilton loves the attention. I hope you are all well. Wear a mask, Black Lives Matter. Try to help the world by making smart food choices and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Say bye. Mm -hmm. bye.